So I know what a vintage year is when talking about a bottle of wine, but what is a vintage year of a private equity fund? Well, the vintage year of a private equity fund, which is usually 10 years in length, refers to the year that the fund starts. So then what is vintage risk? Well, vintage risk is the risk that investors invest too much capital in one vintage year. In other words, when investors over allocate capital to private equity funds, that start in a certain year. This can happen for many reasons, including when investors first learn about private equity and get excited to invest in the asset class all at once. The reason why this is risky is because the overall economy, which includes the private companies within the economy, experiences cycles, the ups and downs that come with expansions and recessions. So let's say an investor invested most of their money in a venture capital fund that had a vintage year of 1997. Well, there's a good chance that this venture capital fund invested in early stage companies in 1997, 1998, and 1999 before the dot-com bubble and probably didn't do so well. Or let's say an investor invested most of their money in a buyout fund that had a vintage year of 2005. Well, there's a good chance that this buyout fund invested in companies in 2005, 2006, and 2007 before the 2008 financial crisis and probably didn't do so well either. So how do you mitigate vintage risk? Well, you diversify across vintages. In other words, you find a way to diversify your private equity exposure across multiple years. But wait. It's not that easy. Just a reminder from our previous videos, when an investor commits capital to a private equity fund, since the private equity fund needs to find companies to buy, not all of the capital is invested up front. Usually about 20 to 30% of the capital is invested up front, while the remaining capital is uncalled. And that uncalled capital will be eventually invested in pri private equity fund when the private equity fund finds deals. So investors in private equity funds not only have to worry about vintage risk, but also have to worry about how to invest the uncalled capital to ensure it is available to be called. In our video titled Issues with Committed Capital and Private Equity, we went into detail about an example from before the pandemic of a Swiss family office that was earning negative interest rates on its uncalled capital since it wanted to keep its money in Swiss francs and needed to keep its money available to be called. So how do we diversify across vintages? I'm glad you asked. In this video, we will talk about three ways to diversify across vintages in private equity to help you mitigate vintage risk. We will talk about building a private equity program, third-party evergreen funds, and first-party open-ended funds. And we'll end the video with a final thought. So let's get started with building a private equity program. If you have the knowledge and expertise to conduct due diligence on private equity funds, then you may want to build a private equity program in-house. This can include investing in private equity funds, private equity funds with co-investments, where the funds give you access to direct deals, and investing in direct private companies. A great option would be a combination of the three. When it comes to investing in private equity funds, you'll want to ensure that you are spreading out the vintage years of your funds so that you are not overexposed to one single year. One way to do that is to plan to invest roughly an equal amount in private equity over a certain number of years. In general, this would be a good plan, but you'll want to leave yourself some flexibility to tactically take advantage of opportunities. 
When it comes to dealing with uncalled capital, well, you will want to integrate your private equity program into the overall strategy of your portfolio, which will include all of your assets. If you remember from our video titled, How Family Offices Should Invest in Private Equity, we reviewed surveys by Citi, Goldman, and UBS that showed that, on average, a family office invests between 15 and 26% in private equity. So that means that 74 to 85% is not invested in private equity and will be invested in public market equities, fixed income, real estate, infrastructure, hedge funds, and other types of investments. So to best integrate your private equity program into your entire portfolio, you'll wanna make sure you have the right balance of liquid investments in other asset classes to fund your private equity capital calls. CPP Investments, which has $575 billion in assets, has a full team called Total Fund Management that manages the fund's exposures, leverage, and liquidity across all horizons. This includes selling the right liquid investments, such as stocks and bonds, to fund private equity investments, whether it's a private equity investment, that's a fund, a co-investment, or direct investment. So you can manage vintage risk by building a private equity program, but there are other options as well. So let's move on to another option to manage vintage risk, and that is third-party evergreen funds. Firms such as Harborvest, Northleaf, Hamilton Lane, and Partners Group have created vehicles that invest in private equity through a mix of methods, mostly secondaries and direct co-investments, but they may also have some primaries as well, a mix of stages such as venture capital, growth, and bio, and a mix of geographies such as North America, Europe, and Asia. These vehicles will mitigate vintage risk since they diversify the timing of their investments, but it's important to understand the details involved. Luckily for you, we went into more details about third-party evergreen funds in our video titled Liquid Private Equity. So check out that video to learn more. So let's move on to another option to manage vintage risk, and that is first-party open-ended funds. Firms such as KKR, through its product called K-Prime, and EQT, through its product called EQT Nexus, have created similar vehicles to the evergreen funds we spoke about earlier, with the exception that the underlying investments are the private equity firm's own funds. We went through more details of first-party open-ended funds in our video titled Liquid Private Equity. So please check out that video to learn more. Now, here's a final thought. Investors, if you are investing in a private equity fund, you'll want to look at the fund's team investment strategy, investment process, fund details, reporting, secondaries, and ESG. But even if the fund is incredible, please don't put your entire private equity allocation in that fund, no matter how tempting it is. This will expose you to vintage risk, a risk that you now know how to mitigate after watching this video.